in your opinion, I mean, is there much of a difference between AAA and AA? You know, baseball's baseball. We just spent six weeks in Major League Camp, and you know, the longer you're there, you realize it's the same same game there as well. You know, I haven't spent the past 23 years in, in AA. Uh, you know, I, I, I've come to realize that you know, th these guys just want to know how much you care about them, how much time you're willing to put in with them. And, it's like I'll tell them in the clubhouse, I mean, my job here and staff's job is if they've got big league time to get them some more, and if they don't, get them to the big leagues. Um, I, I think that's the same job description I had in double A. And, uh, you know, obviously WBC was this year. Kind of threw things off preseason-wise for, for most major league clubs, and I'm sure that trickles down here. Just what difference was there, if, if any, for you? For you, you know, we had 12 guys in the organization that play for their countries in WBC, and I think it's a wonderful thing. I enjoyed watching those games. If anything, I think it helped us out in the minor leagues because during Major League camp, you got to see a lot of guys playing in Major League exhibition games that they're probably slated to go to AAA and AA. So it was a good way to kind of get you know an advanced look at, at guys. And, and coming out of spring training, I, I think you know some of these guys got 50 or 60 at bats during big league camp, where ordinarily they may have only got 20, 25. What do you think? Obviously, because we were just talking about the roster isn't completely finalized yet, but of the guys that you do know that will be there, just what do you think about the? Well, you know what? I, I, I think obviously, you know, going into this, I have a good feeling. I think we have a chance. You know, just looking at their, at their track records and, of guys that that. Uh, Know, that I've managed in the past and guys that I haven't managed that are coming in from other organizations. They all they were all signed for a reason and they have good track records. And, you know, every year's a new year and, and uh, you know hopefully uh, you know their track records speak for themselves and they, they accomplish the same put the same kind of numbers up this year they have in the past. And I know it's a cheesy question but is opening day the build up to opening day still feel as special? Yeah, you're saying when you're old like I am, it's, it's, yeah, it still gets me excited. I've, I've told you know a lot of people if I don't if I don't get excited and anxious and nervous for opening day, and I don't get chills for the national anthem opening day, it's time for me to go home. And uh, I still feel the same. Uh, uh, in my mind, today's the roughest day of the season because I'm not a big meeting guy, and I got to have a clubhouse meeting. And Brad Taylor's going to bring him. He, he and his staff are going to come in and meet. And, you know, it just postpones us from getting out on the field. You know, but once we get out on the field, it will really feel good. If we get get into a, a routine here in the next few days, that will feel good. But yeah, it's, it's still very exciting. Uh, about the possibility of uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. came to play some games here? There, There is a possibility. Um, you know, you're probably hearing and reading the same things that I hear. I haven't gotten any official word on that, but I think there's a pretty good chance at some point in time um, we'll see Tatis Jr. here. Um, getting ready before he returns to the big leagues. What is the process? I mean, I know probably a few days, weeks down the line for that, but kind of what's the process for if that happens? For you know, here? again, I, I know mo most about this just from talking to Tatis Jr. And, uh, you know, I, I think he told me the tentative plan was, was to meet us in, in uh, Sacramento, so he wouldn't be here the first three at home, but um, he, he's still doing his stuff in, in Arizona right now. But, when I get official word, I'll be sure to let y'all know. But you know, that's all I know is what what uh, Toddy's told me. Chihuahua was celebrating the year number ten yep. here in El Paso. Just the importance of this organization for part of the Padres farm system. Well, you know, for the past nine, I've been below this place, and, and uh, you know, for nine years, I've had to listen to everybody rave about how wonderful this stadium is, which is it's unbelievable. I, I'd probably say this is probably the nicest stadium in all of minor leagues, and, and the fans and the support. And you know, I feel very, very fortunate and very grateful to be here for this 10 years, in the 10th year. And uh, I'm looking forward to all that comes with this place. Great players passing here in two years, like Luis Urias, who have a great actuation in the last uh, World Classic of Baseball. You know, I just talked to him the other day. I was very proud of that young man, Luis Urias. And he did. He represented his, his country in Mexico very well. And, and uh, you know, I, I hope that that kick starts him and, and he has a great big league season and, unless they're playing against the Padres, you know, then uh, he can get a couple of hits, but I hope they lose. Uh, but nonetheless, yeah, I'm very proud of Luis Urias. He, he, was, uh, he was an integral part of my double-A club a couple years ago, and I love the young man. How many of you guys from the missions that you coached last year? You know what, I meant to, that's a good question. I meant to look at that today and see, you, you know, there's batting and, and uh, uh, Brandon Dixon, 
Felipe. I, I, I meant to look at that, but it's probably got to be eight or ten of them that I've had. You know, some of them even last year. And uh, Pedro Avila. There's, there's, they more keep coming to mind. Yeah, that's. There's about half of them that I've, I've had this year with, and the other half of you guys. But again, because we had six weeks of major league camp, and. Uh, those guys got to pitch and play a lot more than they ordinarily would because of the WBC. I feel like I know some of these guys better than than I would had had they had they uh, not had the WBC this year. A lot of people from Las Cruces and from Juarez come here also to see the Chihuahuas. What do what do you can say, especially for the people across the border from Mexico to see the Chihuahuas games? Well, you know what? I hope we provided you know an entertaining game for them. You know, and. You know, I, I look at people that sit in the stands uh, because my dad was one of those. I'm the oldest of four boys, and, and my dad worked uh, his tail off for years and years in the auto parts business. So when we got to come to a game, um, you know, that was a big deal for a family of four boys because that, that cost a lot of money. <clears throat> so, you know, I appreciate the fact that they put in a work day and they've gotten their family of four and been able to come out to a game. And, you know, it's going to cost them some money to feed that family while they're here. I hope we provide entertainment. I, that's that's exactly what I tell my guys. These people work hard for their money, and they're spending it to come watch you play. Give them, give them, give them some entertaining moments. Oof.